It's October in Michigan and it is apple season. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make the best apple pie ever. Yesterday I stopped at one of our local apple orchards, Blake's here in Armada. There are so many to choose from right now. I just love being in Michigan in October. We had a 10-acre apple orchard, and we were growing 23 different varieties. So I had a lot of opportunity to experiment with different types of apples, different varieties. And what we felt made the best apple pie were these right here. This is not a beautiful apple. They're always kind of irregular. They're meaning the core does not go straight down the apple, so it's always a little fatter on one side. They're kind of like a greenish with a little red hue. These are Northern Spies. And after surveying a lot of our customers and asking them what they felt the best apple was for baking a pie, a lot of the grandmas and grandpas told me that they felt that Northern Spies were the best for making pies. And so that's what we have used for many, many years. So talking to the ladies at Blake's, and I told them that I was gonna do a video. They told me, you know, why don't you do a nice blend of apples? And I think that's a great idea. So she said, um, you know, the Northern Spies are a really strong tart apple, great for baking, terrible for eating. And so she said, why don't you blend some Golden Delicious and you can cut back on your sugar. So I have some Golden Delicious here that are much sweeter. And I have some Macintosh and these are real tart. They're a softer apple. So we knew that they would cook down in the pie a little bit before the rest of these later season apples are because these have a harder texture to them. So we'll still have our firmness with the Cortlands and the Spies, but we'll have the sweetness with the Goldens and the tartness with the Macintosh. I'm really hoping that it turns out to be the perfect eating experience for an apple pie. I love this little apple peeler. It's so much fun. We used to sell them in our stores for many years and people loved them. Bring them home. It's fun for the kids. I'm going to peel two or three of these golden delicious and this one here I felt a little bit of the cartilage. This is the core inside of this. So I've got my apple core and I'm going to have to get that out because you don't want to serve a pie with that little bit of, you know, hard seed packet or cartilage, whatever. Especially not if my husband Dave is eating this. So then you cut it in half and look at these nice thin slices that we have. So you can tell the difference between this Macintosh that I peeled and this Golden Delicious. Just look at the different color of flesh in these apples. So these Northern Spies really have a tougher texture than those Goldens or Macintosh. Boy, I could tell it. I could tell the difference when I'm peeling. They're a terrible eating apple. I hate eating Northern Spies. You gotta make sure that this apple is on correctly and that you're hoping that that core goes through that hole. So let's see what happens. The faster you go, the better. All right, let's check for any cartilage. Like I said, Dave's going to be eating this pie, and I better not have any in there. All right, yeah, boy. These apples just give you a snap compared to this golden. So there you have Macintosh, Cortland, Golden Delicious, and Northern Spy. Look at the difference. So the oxidation happens pretty, pretty quickly with a spy. So in order to prevent that, you can soak this in some water with a little bit of lemon juice, and that will help the oxidation to stop. Okay, so step two in making the apple pie is creating a roux. And if you've never made a roux before, it's really helpful to use a roux when you are looking for items without lumps, like gravy or sauce. So you melt some butter, and I've got about a half a cup of butter melted in here, 
and I'm going to add my flour, and that's it. Butter and flour, but you want to make sure that the flour is totally cooked out of here. So we've got about three tablespoons of flour. You want to stir it pretty quickly. So after about 15 seconds of stirring, I've got a really nice, smooth texture in here. It's a beautiful color, but I want it to cook a little more. I need that flour to cook out. I don't want to end up with any kind of flour aftertaste in my apple pie. So I'm going to cook this until it gets to be a thick paste and starts pulling away from the sides of the pan. This is your pasty. It's turning thick. It's pulling away from the sides. This is a perfect roux. And this roux will hold up for a long time in your refrigerator and you can use it when you're making stews or trying to thicken things. Just use a spoonful of it. Now I'm going to add my sugars. So I have white sugar. Again, we're at my home baking and we don't have white sugar here. So I had to use the cane sugar. This is brown sugar. Throw that in there too. And got my cinnamon and I'm going to throw in about a half a cup of apple cider or maybe more. So this looks really good and it smells even better. So once this comes to a boil and I'm going to let it simmer for a little bit, make sure that everything is thickened up really nice. Then I'm going to pour this over the apples. Okay, oh yeah. This is what you want it to look like. Oh, this is nice. It's getting real thick. The longer I let it cook, the thicker it will get. I don't want it to condense too much. But just enough so it's kind of like a thick caramel sauce. So now we've got to mix the apples with the syrup. And as you saw, that syrup is really hot. So be careful. Once I get it stirred up a little bit, it should cool down. But I'm hoping that it coats every single apple slice. Now sometimes I might even cook a little bit of the apples in with that mixture, just to get some of them softened up and to give me a little more what we might call slurry. But I think this is perfect. You know, and if you're looking at this, you might even think that you might have to add a little more cinnamon. You can never take it out, but you can always add more in. So let's set that aside for a minute and let's go find those dough pucks. All right, so I have these dough balls or pucks that I prepped in my last video. Check that one out if you want to learn how to make this pie crust. So I've had these in the refrigerator cooling off and I think they're perfect. But you know, I've got a large pie tin. It's not a tin, it's a ceramic and it's huge. I got this one from Williams in Sonoma probably 25 years ago. It's beautiful, but uh, I'm going to need a lot of dough to fill this big, huge ceramic pie plate. So I'm probably going to take about one and a half balls of dough just to be on the safe side. Maybe not quite one and a half. And I got this little dinky rolling pin again. I'm used to big stuff, you guys. Like I've rolled lots of pie in my life. Sprinkle your surface with a little flour. This is going to take a while. Like I say, I always like to start in the center and roll outward. So I center, roll up, center, roll down, roll over in the three o'clock position, the six o'clock. So we're going to try to get this nice and even. I don't want any thick spots. I don't want any paper thin spots. The rolling pin that I usually use is about three times bigger than this. And I've probably put 100,000 miles on it. So this is just a cute little decorative one. I pick up rolling pins when I'm out at flea market or yard sales. I like collecting them, especially if they have color to them. I hope you've enjoyed all my 
mid-century mid bowls and everything. I also collect these. All right, so I've got a pretty good size and it looks pretty good. I think it's gonna fit. All right, so now I'm gonna fold it in quarters, starting from the top, fold down, into the center. All right, here we go. Lay it down halfway and unfold it. Oh, that looks great. Tap it down. All right, so if this mixture is really hot, I don't wanna pour it into my pie shell, into this delicate pastry. So I'm gonna make sure that this is cool. Mm, it smells really good. Mm, that's perfect. But guys, don't you think that it needs a little bit more butter? So here we go with a couple more pucks. We're going to need a lot of dough to cover this big, huge pie. So let's not overwork this dough, okay? I just squashed these two together. Let's get it going. Let's not play around with this dough. Now remember, when you do a lattice, you're going to have overlapping pieces of pie crust, right? And we want to make sure that that pie crust gets thoroughly baked. So if you've got really thick pie dough and you have two of them on top of each other as you're weaving, it's not going to bake. So I'm going to roll this out just a little bit thinner than usual. All right, here we go with a little pinwheel. This is a lot of fun. So how thick do you want your strips to be? I don't know, is that like two inches there? They don't have to be perfect. This is a homemade pie. We don't want it to look like a machine made it. Okay, I've got about 12. So I want to go six one way and six the other way. So of course, my longest strips here in the middle need to go in the middle of the pie. Okay, so I just want to make sure that that butter is tucked down and that all of my apples are up inside the pie. So I put my first one here and I'm going to use another shorter one here closer to the edge. And how many did I say I needed? Six across. Maybe this one here. And maybe this long one. So what I'm going to do, this is extra long, but I'm going to break it off here in case I need this piece for something. I'm going to save those scraps. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So let's take two and four, the even numbers, and pull them back right here at the center. And let's put one down and fold these back over it. So now let's take the odd number strips, number one, number three, and number five, pull it back. And so we're creating our basket weave. So we go back to two and four, let's pull those back. Let's grab a shorter strip because we're on the edge and pull these guys back. Isn't that pretty so far? And then let's go over here on this side of the pie. Which ones need to be pulled back? One, three, and five. And now we're going to pull back two and four. And sometimes if you want to get these a little bit closer so that you can use all your pie crust here. We're going to have to bake this and get a shot of it. All right. Now I've got a little bit of dough rolled out left over here just in case we have an emergency. So I'm going to start trying to pinch the edges together. I want to get the bottom and the top sealed up. But it's not like I have a straight 
flat sheet of dough, I have these little strips of lattice, so it's not going to be the same as trying to get your top and your bottom crust adhered. So I'm just doing this pinch where I'm putting my thumb in the middle and making little V shapes. And if you need a little dough to make up for a little weak area where there's, where there's a weak edge, I'm going to wrap the edge with tin foil. I already know that because this is such a big, heavy pie. It's going to take probably an hour and a half to bake. Okay, now I'm going to try to cut the edges off. Maybe I'll use a knife. So in my last video, I used the side of my finger. But this time, I might use a knife. Because remember, the shape of this ceramic pie plate was already had ruffles around the edge and now I just put more ruffles so that's beautiful but I'm still not done I might take a couple more of these strips and maybe I'll cut out some leaves Put a leaf here in the middle. Another leaf. So now I'm going to make an egg wash to wash the top of this pie. Now we don't do this at the pie shop. Actually our apple pies there are vegan so as you saw this one is really loaded with butter. Now I'm going to put an egg wash on the top. This is a pretty little egg that one of my new hens just started laying. And a pink colored egg. And a little bit of cream. And as you can see, the egg yolks here are just so bright yellow. I mean, my chickens are out on the grass foraging for themselves, a lot of bugs and out there actually eating grass and a lot of kitchen scraps. All right, so you want to hit the edges with your egg wash. This is really super thick. Sometimes you actually need to water it down a little bit. Okay, so it's just about ready for the oven. I hope you have a good hot oven preheated. Okay, so the pie is ready for the oven, but I'm going to put this oven guard in the oven first and place the pie on top of it. And as you see, I've got a hole in the middle so the heat can come up and bake the bottom crust of that pie. But yet, when this apple pie starts bubbling and losing some of the juice around the edge, it's going to hit the bottom of the oven unless I'm protecting it with this. So, and I know about halfway through baking this, I'm going to go in the oven and wrap the edge with tin foil to protect the edges from burning. It's going to take a long time for these apples to bake. Or I can use this pie shield or tin foil, whatever you have easy and handy. All right, so there you have it. That's how you make an apple pie. I hope that you enjoyed my video today. Please hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend, and give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next week. Northern Spy? Yep, told you. Those are cooking apples. You have to eat the rest of that. Do not waste an apple. <laughs>